And a pleasure to welcome to the studio author, communicator, and well, part of the pastoral team at Life, Cy Rogers. Great uh, to be here. Thanks. In terms of the work that you do, and or particularly the the pastoral work that you're now involved with. Mm. What, what's that involved, sir? Well, you know, this is my 34th year of full-time ministry, and I've always been in the field of communication. And uh, that's also been mingled with pastoral care. A lot of what I do present in media has to do with what I've learned about the human condition, why people have struggles, especially in the area of sexuality and relationship. And of course, for many years, this has not been adequately addressed, but it is a much better day. And one of the things that thrills me about being back in New Zealand and being based out of life is that I have a kind of a multifaceted opportunity, a menu of being able to teach interns, Bible college students, invest in the community and nation, as well as present uh, what I've earned in learned along the way, personally and professionally, from the pulpit. So in this season of my life, I'm having a great time being back here and serving on the team of life. In terms of relationships, I mean, we're all in relationships. We're mm. created to be relational beings. Mm. And yet often, even within the church community, we get that wrong. We're not particularly good at relationships. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, part of it's our history. Part of it's just our plain old humanity. You know, and we also are awash in circumstances that can work for or against us. And so I always say you may not have, you know, had a choice about finding yourself in a ditch, but you have a choice about staying in a ditch. It may not be your fault that things went awry in childhood or in your uh, young adult life that set you up for vulnerability or maybe boundaries got crossed, but now we can do something responsible and healthy about that. And I think that's what I really love about this season of church culture. Rather than just judging or criticizing, we're offering offering a much more informed helping hand. You know, we're not born knowing how to do this thing, but we have the opportunity to learn how. And uh, I know being a dad and a granddad myself, I, I, uh, I see that too, that uh, I, I have grace for a, a child. I can't expect a three-year-old to act like a 33-year-old, but as you grow older, that maturation enables capability and thus opportunity. And I think it's like that for us in learning to relate healthily. We're maybe growing up from a broken environment like I came from. Um, I was disadvantaged and I was wary, I was wounded, I was hungry for love. That set me up to be easily misled. But yet, even though I was off track, I learned how to get back on track. And I I think putting God first helped to recalibrate my life, uh, and that changed how I would learn to relate to other people. And as a pastor, uh, I love to be able to say, this is not the faith that's based on rules or regulations or rituals. This is not a religion. This is relationship to God, and out of that we learn to relate to others from a posture of health and maturity and responsible conduct. And that may not come evenly, consistently, automatically, and there may be internal and external challenges to that, but we can still learn to find our way forward. There are the uh, standards in God's Word that act as a guide. There is the Holy Spirit within us to illumine and uh, correct, and uh, there is the community of God to come alongside and offer us compensation and camaraderie so that if there are deficits, they can be compensated, and if there is a need for guidance, it can be provided in the mentoring of discipleship. So. Uh, all of that relationally uh, it helps people really be able to get back on track and grow forward, especially if we have a church that understands that and is willing to uh, offer that kind of informed discipleship. And, and thankfully, I belong to a house that does that. Mm. It, the role of Christian media in all of this to communicate mm. a, a different way of relating to each other and, of course, relating to God, how do you see Christian media's role in communicating the truth of that to the public? Well, you know, when I was a much younger Christian, uh, I might have been a little bit cynical about the role of Christian television. But, you know, later opportunities uh, prevailed in my life where, having already become involved in pastoral care, considered a specialist in that area, uh, I found, though, over and over again, many pulpits, and we're talking years ago, uh, they were so conservative that they didn't want to go there and talk about sexuality. Uh, they didn't want to talk about the uh, underlying concerns that set people up for struggle. It was just too awkward at that time, it seemed, at least in, in some corners of church culture. God loves His people, and He wants them to be reached with good news and encouragement. He wants them to be empowered and educated. So I found the Lord was just open door after door in media for me, local and national media, and I ended up having three of my own television programs. Uh, two of them won national awards, uh, and I think that was God's way of saying, I affirm this path as a means to bring two people in the privacy of their homes, teaching, equipping, empowerment, and encouragement that they might not get in a pulpit yet. 
and uh, Christian television uh, was certainly a vehicle for me to see my own ministry enlarge and uh, hopefully for God's kingdom to be expanded, extended uh, to his people. So uh, I, I would say my attitude has changed dramatically and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had, including right here at Shine over the years. So uh, yeah, I'm sold. What would you say to other people that are listening? There'll be people watching this from, from different backgrounds, from mm -hmm. different relationships, perhaps with different struggles, that have been blessed or benefited from the ministry of Shine TV. What would you say to encourage them to commit to this ministry, to give generously to this course? I definitely believe, you know, if I hear a speaker, uh, you know, it is a practice of our house, it's been a practice of my life, that I like to sow back into that person who invests in me. And I think it's the same situation with Christian television. This is bringing a continuous stream of spiritual authority, spiritual illumination, good insight and teaching from a wide variety of sources. And I think that if you derive benefit from that, you are fed through that, I think it's appropriate that uh, you would sow back into that. And so uh, I think it is an understandable um, ask and appeal, a right one. And I really hope that people will take that on board and want to be a part of reaching people through this medium that maybe individually they couldn't, but which the medium can. And uh, if you've been fed by it, I think why not help support it? Absolutely. Well, Sire, we thank you for your ministry, which I know has been a blessing to so many people. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure.